When the announcement at the Melody Festival and press conference was made that Margaret would be entering SVT's Melody Festival and you guys got your tizzies and a fizzies. You viewed this video so many times. We had to reach out to Margaret's team and graciously, even during your busy schedule here in Stockholm, we have this awesome time to interview you. And oh my gosh, I'm start blushing. <laughs> you're awesome. You've definitely gained a huge fan base. Um, especially with Cool Me Down, which has millions and millions of views, probably over 30 at this point with the different versions of the video. Yeah. And, well, what can we say? We're excited to see you back on stage in, well, the biggest platform in Sweden, Melody Festival. I'm, I must say I'm equally excited as you are because it's a big thing for me and I'm really looking forward. Well, let's take it back to, you know, the starting of your career yeah. because you've always been involved in music your mm -hmm. life. It's not like everything started with Cool Me Down. Yeah. Um, let's talk a little bit about how you got famous or, you know, scouted. You used to have a fashion blog where you also yeah. made music. I mean, uh, I've, that's, that, that was me being smart ass because I've been singing like since I remember and um, but it's it's just so hard to break through and to be like seen somewhere because there's so many talented people. So and also I've been all, always like interested in fashion. So I started running a fashion blog, mm -hmm. and when I reached the point that I have like a lot of followers, then I was like, hey, so I'm singing as well. So there's my songs, and actually it worked. And uh, my manager found me. Yeah, and we're thankful your manager found you because then we got this song, Thank You Very Much, probably the first big song that you had. Yeah. And, well, it also got noticed on a global scale because of the music video. Yeah, that was so cool. Basically, everyone was naked in the video. Except me. <laughs> Except you. Yeah. Except you. And, of course, uh, there was a bit of controversy with YouTube, probably, about the content. A lot of, a lot of, I mean, it's been blocked so many times, um, but it was worth, I guess. <laughs> yeah, well, because you stood your ground. You stood by the video, yeah. and you even said on the issue of nudity that, you know, uh, why not? You know, it's, it's, it's the human body, and you even used the term for liberty, equality, and fraternity, which was born out of the French Revolution. So were you trying to begin a revolution here? Uh, I'm not sure because there is so many things that are normal to me. Like um, that video, it wasn't controversial to me. It was just a funny video and I really liked that. But it was like, yeah, making people, whatever. <laughs> but I think it's important to, to still showing people that that kind of things are also normal, like for, for that, that kind of people, because um, we're different and I really respect our differences. I think that's the most beautiful thing. And speaking of showing visually differences, yeah. you had another video, uh, Start a Fire. Mm -hmm. And in that video, uh, not only is it another powerful song where you're standing your ground, but also you had a wide variety of people in love yeah uh, with a, a disabled person for example yeah. and you also had uh, a same-sex couple making out yeah, yeah. Um, I really was wondering how it's gonna be um, what what's gonna be the reactions because we were talking about love which is like for me love is love yeah. it doesn't matter if it's like heterosexual or it's like we still have problems, unfortunately, with like black people and white people having like, but it's, I think that we must um, stand out and we must talk about it and must like have that kind of things. I mean, in music, it's like the best platform to, to start the conversation. So, but um, I think the reaction was good, actually. Yeah, well, it was because you've won many, many awards. You've won awards from both Poland, but also the MTV EMAs. 
best Ooh. Polish talk. So it's definitely worked. And one thing that's amazing about you is when you want to learn more about Margaret online, it's so easy to find so much information about you on the internet. For example, your clarinet saxophone background and how you had an accident and you couldn't play your instruments for a while. Um, and I think that strategy, you know, being so active online has you know, guarded your followers from all over the world, mm-hmm. international fans. Is this something that you do yourself or your team that you focus on your online presence? Um, I think that running the fashion blog, and also I'm, I'm the kind of generation that really connects with internet quickly. And, uh, but I'm focusing always on showing myself in the internet only um, my professional, professional side. I'm trying to avoid any intimacy, any like private thing, because that's the only thing that's left just for myself. <laughs> Moving on, so you had Add the Blonde, which was released, and you did an interesting project with a Canadian jazz singer, yeah. Matt Dusk, and you did a comp- you did a duet album, jazz yeah. album, just the I, two of us. I really love that one. I mean, I I really take that period of time because when I was in high school, I've been I fell in love with jazz music so much and when the, ki- the idea came up I was like wow yeah let's do it because I needed, I, I needed a break from just you know a pop music I needed something that's gonna be um, something for my old times and it, it felt so good and I was getting and still getting along with my desk so well so I really love that one and the thing is that I think that um, the jazz is gonna be with me like forever because I'm I'm going back and forth. Um, like f- few weeks ago, I we, I did a concert with a, a Grammy winner, mm. uh, one of the Polish Grammy winner, um, and it felt so good and so natural. So yeah, it's gonna definitely I'm gonna go back to jazz again. It's what you feel at the moment, but it's like your little safe base there, exactly. the jazz style. It's a, it's like coming home. <laughs> yeah. Speaking of, we'll get to what happened afterwards in Poland, mm-hmm. um, which was back in 2016. You yeah. were in the Polish Eurovision selection show, National Elimination. And going into the show, which is just one televised show, yeah. uh, you were the, not only the bookie's favorite to win mm-hmm. the Polish selection, but also to win the whole Eurovision Song Contest. Yeah. And I know you've been in contests before this, but did you feel a lot of pressure going into that performance? Oh man, that was just... Uh, so that's not a period of time, mm. but I don't like it. Mm. I really don't like it and it's been very tough tough to me. Mm. And I had a, after that, I had a little breakdown and that's what the What You Do song is about actually. Yeah. <laughs> because it's been very tough. Um, first of all, it's been... S- very stressful. Mm. Second of all, just before the the uh, the concert, I I became sick, very yeah. sick. My throat been like I shouldn't sing that time, and uh, and I know that it wasn't my best performance. Like I know it. Come on. Mm. <laughs> and but they were like people just you cannot sing. She sucks and stuff like that and. And it's been really tough to me, and even like talking about it right now, it feels like, yeah, I don't want to go back. Yeah, but you definitely turned it around because it was a great song. Yeah, it is too, I love it. It went double platinum and charted in Romania, charted in Sweden. You were able to perform it at some pretty big televised events here in Sweden over the summer uh, after it was released. Uh, It got you in touch with the Warner Music Group, who now distribute you. Uh, yeah. or some of your music worldwide yeah. and it's done really well just since its release so you definitely took it embraced it and continued on because it wasn't it was a great song well that's what I'm uh, trying always to do in my life because I'm just a human being and I do a lot of mistakes I mean oh man I'm like great we all do <laughs> I'm just on the highest level we should have a mistake off contest because I'm up there too. I think yeah, we all are. We all are. Exactly. <laughs> but when you're like, uh, when you're in the position I am right now and people think that they can just, you know, 
who bad things about you. It's just sometimes it's so hard, and mm. I'm so I'm so sens sensitive as well. I'm doing a lot of mistakes, and but then again, I'm just a human being, and I'm trying to be. Um, and sometimes I just stop and like, okay, so you did that wrong, but it doesn't mean you're a wrong person or you just, you know. Yeah. It shit happens. Shit happens. Truly. It Is that what your does. tattoo says? It does. And you got that after? Uh, no, before. You've had it before. It happens, it happens before. in life. It happens all the time. It happens all the time. All the time. Yeah. Um, so then, then again, I was like, because I started even to having like, I kind of being even scared of singing because it was so much like people, mm. the comments, hating. Mm. It's really awful. Mm. And uh, after that, I was like, oh, come on. I mean, it's uh, everybody making mistakes. That's okay. And what you do next what you do <laughs> yeah. what you do when you fail all the way what you do what you do speaking of that's when afterwards you had monkey business come out mm. and what you do which got some good international airplay yeah. what you do again is another song where you know you're talking about maybe failing but then you're like what do you do well you just reach up higher and, and push yeah, yourself and again, i mean come on we just, we just it happens all the time and it's but i think it's also it's so so important to talk about it mm. because even in the internet I sometimes I read the comments on my Instagram or mm. Facebook mm. and I see that like young people they're like oh, they cannot forgive themselves for being not perfect mm. and being not perfect that's what makes you you so I think that it's just so important to talk about it and to mm. be like okay with being imperfect yeah and I don't, yeah, yeah. But it's your messages, your songs, they all have this theme of empowerment. Mm -hmm. And it could be different points in people's lives, like someone did you wrong, or you just want to have that confidence when you walk out. And there's this theme of empowerment, and you portray this as an artist. And as an artist, I'm not just talking about the song itself, but visually, because your music videos are visual. Um, and it also you know, be attests to the fact that you're a very visual person mm -hmm. too, with your fashion sense. Uh, do you have a part in your music videos? Because they're all quite amazing. Oh yeah, I'm so picky. Yeah, um, but I, as I grew up, I have even more, uh, there's even more Margaret in Margaret's videos, of course, because I learned it. Um, and like what you do, it's been like, I remember myself one night couldn't sleep and was thinking about that song. And I wanted, I didn't want it to be like too sad with the, like failing and stuff like that yeah. and then I saw I was just you know doing something on the internet and then I started playing and it was a game called Quake Quake? Oh wow, <laughs> that's such an old game <laughs> I know and I was like wow yeah that's what you do like playing games you're failing yeah. but you you have another and that's where you got that's where you got the music video <laughs> exactly. idea from and that, that was the idea for it cool and uh, Perez Hilton and in the US gave you a yeah. shout out on his blog and about like, what you do. Yeah, and that's the second time because he did also with Cool Me Now. Yeah. Um, and he he wrote me like a, like a heart, like a message private. I'm like, Oh, yes. wow. So he's <laughs> definitely gonna be following you. So there's no doubt he's also gonna be watching what's happening in your cabana. What's happening there? Well, you're gonna be working with four songwriters that were on Cool Me Down, mm -hmm. Linnea Deb, Arash, who was at Eurovision it's, back in 2009, like Robert, um, uh, Robert Ullman and uh, Anders Vertov. Yeah. So how did this song come about? Did you, were you just working with your songwriters and you thought, oh, this is amazing, and then the mellow opportunity came? Or did you get approached about mellow and said, mm, I want to work with this team again? So first, it was a mellow kind of thought. Ooh, maybe we should try. But then I was like just so busy having so many things to do, and then Anders, uh, I, I, yeah, Anders went to to Dubai mm -hmm. to Robert Ullman, and they started doing some songs, like thinking about thinking about Melody Festival, and, mm -hmm. and then I got a call, hey Margaret, what are you doing tomorrow? Like I don't know, nothing. Okay, so I'll come to Sweden, and I came, and um, I don't know, you know, the thing is that we know each other for so many years already. With Anders and Robert and Uncle Arash, mm, mm, mm. and uh, uh, and it's just uh, 
also the way it is like that it sounds like this it's because also they know me so well mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so it's gonna be the mixture of hmm, you know cocky a little bit of laid back I don't care let's go yeah yeah but still a strong person yeah, kind of exactly. this is what we do this is what you do so we're excited to see that we'll get to that during the Gothenburg heat but when the announcement came you had so many supporters that absolutely were excited to see you back on stage and speaking of negative comments we had some people who were upset um, about uh, this announcement uh, something to the line of also that you stated before that you did not want to be involved with the Eurovision Song Contest yeah. uh, and to I guess Polish media and now you were appearing in, in the Swedish media yeah well yeah we Polish people we, we love hating each other so badly I'm not I'm not sure if it's happening in Swedish Sweden as well or is it that strong? But I God? think, but in Poland, to be fair, most of your Polish fans were happy for you. Most yeah, of your Polish fans were happy for you. Yeah, I know, yeah. but I've, I've also read some, some like, not nice titles, and that's okay. Um, and I must say, I'm still not interested in Eurovision. Mm -hmm. I'm here for Melody Festival, and, mm -hmm. and my dream would be to, to sing as much, as many times as I can. Mm just to be known by a Swedish audience that's yeah. that's the I mean and also I know that it's a Swedish thing mm -hmm. and a Swedish act would should win mm -hmm. because I mean come on well you 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 everyone involved the songwriting process making the song are Swedish yeah. so why is this any different <laughs> right um, and I think it's also um, something to say that you already connected with the Swedish public with Call Me Down yeah, that's true. And, and what you do and you've been working with Swedish teams even way before Call Me Down yeah, yeah. from your first big song thank you very much Thomas Carlson and uh, Joachim Bude. Bude you've been yeah. working with Swedish production for pretty much your professional career so it must have been a natural shift to basically say well I have Swedish production why not get known in the Swedish market more yeah, exactly. And uh, also, I'm, I'm very grateful because the Swedish people were the first one who was like, uh, we recorded, uh, thank you very much with Thomas and Joachim Bure, mm -hmm. and Swedish record label Extensive Music was the first one who was like, hey, we like that girl. It wasn't Polish oh. record label. So yeah. I've, been, I've been supporting by Swedish people yeah. from the very beginning and I'm so grateful. And, and even someone like Arash, who represented Azerbaijan yeah. and is very adamant about his Iranian Swedish roots. Yeah, yeah. You know, we come from all over the world. So why should we be restricted to just one place? And, you know, you obviously identify a lot with a lot of Swedish cultures mm -hmm. um, and you work with a lot of Swedish people in your professional career. Is there any idea of maybe relocating to Sweden or? I mean, it's so cold in here. Yeah, it is cold, I mean, I'm so but nothing can cool you down. You gotta remember that. Nothing can, not even the Swedish winter can cool you down, all right? I mean, today it can. It's so <laughs> yeah, it's it is quite freezing. cold today. It's freezing today. But, um, I'm, the thing is that I don't really feel like I mean, I, I'm ba I, I have, I do my laundry in Warsaw, <laughs> yeah. but I'm just constantly somewhere. All the time. Yeah, all the time. And mm. I'm, I'm so, so many times in Sweden as well. Yeah. So it's, I don't really know where I live. Well, you're a citizen of the world and that's why your fans are from all over the world. But if you're going to be in Sweden, here's a little advice to become more Swedish. If you're angry at someone yeah. here in Sweden, you don't confront them. You, smile. No, no you, you smile, but what you do is you write an anonymous letter, don't put your name on it, and then you put that up in their laundry room. That's what you do in Sweden. So you have to learn this really? concept. Yeah, you write angry letters, don't sign it. Like for example, <laughs> for example, in Gothenburg, you can write a note saying, Samir and Victor, you are wearing too much clothes. Sad emoji. And put it in their dressing room anonymously. That's what you do when you're, yeah. Uh, speaking of laundry, uh, in Sweden. Oh, so we <laughs> Polish people. Oh, what? we can argue. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. But, oh, yeah. see, I don't know what's better, to have it in your face or to have it, you know, anonymously done. But here's another thing to learn about Sweden. Yeah. If you need an excuse to get out of something, uh -huh. like if a friend says, hey, let's go out tonight, and you don't want to do it, yeah. all you have to say is, I can't, I have laundry. That's the best excuse to get out of anything in Sweden. Just say you have laundry. 
No, you're kidding me. <laughs> I'm serious. I was like, hey, do you want to come to my wedding? No, I'm sorry. I have laundry that day. <laughs> we know what it means, wink, wink. It's a little bit about Swedish culture, so it's not just the cold winters. We have some really peculiar things. So, you want to participate in the Melody Festival? No, sorry, I have a laundry. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. So, you're learning, you're learning. But we're going to catch up with you again and get more into your song with In My Cavana when we get to the Gothenburg heat because we can't really wait to hear it. But final question before we get to the end of the interview. Mm -hmm. Usually when artists go on Melody Festivalen to promote, yeah. that means something is coming. So are we looking at another album on the horizon? Oh, uh... We're looking for a lot of new singles, and mm -hmm. we have in we have in, in my cabana we have another one. A follow up, like a follow up to it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, mm, not really. I mean, it's completely different, but right. it's so cool as well. Now we're we gonna see music there. videos for in my cabana. Um, we we're not thinking about it right now mm -hmm. because we, I'm just really focused on Melody Festival and the performance. But yeah, for sure we have to we have to think about it. So there's gonna be a lot of singles. Um, we're thinking about some future rings and stuff like that. So for the international market, exciting. Margaret's ready to take over Sweden and the world. Oh, Rumble. Ah! You go first. Yep. Yeah. You're known for your swag. Yeah. So it's time for. A swag off. Thank you so much, Margaret. I'm not sure who won it. I'm not sure who won. Leave comments down below. Who won this swag off? Don't forget to like and subscribe. Margaret, we can't wait to see what's in your cabana. February 10th. Thank you so much, Margaret. Thank you for being here. Wow.